for the fans, welcomes you to the following presentation of the Simulation Football League. A beautiful day today in Mexico City, Mexico. Andy Hamilton along with Brett Solberg for the Mexico City Aztecs and the D.C. Dragons. Week 4 Simulation Football League action kicks off shortly from Estadio Azteca. And Brett, it has been a wonderful day of action and I think it's going to continue with this one here. I'm going to preface by saying I apologize to the FTF fans out there. You're going to have to deal with me for the second straight game. But this one, I assure you, is going to be a fantastic matchup. We got two lethal offensive teams going head to head. DC has been an uh, offensive juggernaut so far in this season. So far, you got to remember 52 points in the first week alone as they continue to outscore opponents willingly and just whatever they want there but mexico city is being led by running back extraordinaire phoenix jones who had three first half touchdowns on way to victory last week during the convention this is going to be an exciting matchup andy an exciting one indeed these owners know each other very well it was season five when they met on september 27th in the SFL Championship game in Season 5, D.C. came away with a victory 31-30 uh, over the Santa Fe Gorillas at the time. Santa Fe moves to Mexico City. D.C. takes some time off. They return to the, simu the simulation football league of the franchise in the area. And uh, it has been all Mexico City since then in this matchup history. The Aztecs have won the other two matchups. This is just the fourth time that these two historic owners are meeting. And Mexico City wearing red with white pants will kick off. The D.C. Dragons wearing their all-white uniforms with blue numbers will be set to field this one going from left to right. Kick is away from Cole Varner, and we are underway in Mexico. Return off the goal line will come out across the 20, angled to the left, and they will set up at the 23, and we'll start you off with this D.C. Dragons offensive unit. Shabazz Synergy is the second-year quarterback here in D.C., fourth season in the league as a whole. Kevin Say, Chris Britton, halfback and fullback pairing. Mike Churchill, Jeff Banfield, Josh Gill are the wide receivers, and Rupert Westcloud is the tight end, the rookie second round pick. They will start in a shotgun on first and 10 for the 23. Synergy and a fire across the middle, caught and leveled right there. Big hit from KT Harrell, but it's good for eight. Yeah, and uh, Synergy off to a good start here with that nice eight-yard grab there. Uh, Synergy had a little bit of an off game last week with five interceptions despite throwing for close to 250 yards. Got to shake that one off and have a good game here against a stout Mexico City defense. Mark Mello is running the stats truck for us. Appreciate you, Mark. Give up the middle to say we'll go for nothing. Right there was Dan Tritz to make the play, and Let's run you through this Mexico City defense quickly. Brock Lee and Skylar Kingsley are the defensive ends. Dan Tritz, the defensive tackle, just said hello to you right there. KT Harrell, Ronnie Watson, and Dexter Jackson, the linebackers. Gerard Brody, Jermaine Manfield, Menefield, excuse me, Xavier Hawkins are the corners. Jeffrey Daggs and Ben Charbs, the safeties to round out this unit. Third and two, Synergy out to say, say a spin move, has the first down. That's a big spin move from Kevin Say there to get himself basically from not getting the first down to getting the first down there. A nice little spin move, gained them about two or three more yards. And DC slowly rolling here as they start off this game. Moving the chains on the first play. Sometimes, Brett, that is the quickest way to get things going is just keep that ball moving forward. Not backwards, not sideways, forwards the way to go. Give to Say off the right side again. He has a couple blocks, strings it out, and picks up three. Nice little run here from Say there. He had uh, a big game last week, 33 carries for 164 yards and two touchdowns. He's going to want a repeat performance. But uh, Mexico City's defense has been very good against the run so far this season. So it's going to be a clash of two opposing uh forces essentially snap here another toss out to say he's pretty much 
touched the ball on almost all the plays from scrimmage so far. Picks up another three or four yards. Yeah, and, and they, uh, DC loves to get Kevin Say involved as much as possible. This time it looks like to be a mix of uh, run and passing plays to Say there. Kind of get the Mexico City uh, defense a little bit in disarray so that they, maybe they can throw one deep to one of their receivers. Third and three, facing a 4-3 defense here. Safety walk down into the box. Here's Synergy, and as he threw in, dropped. Sack for the Aztecs comes out of the backfield. It's a huge play that will end the drive, and it was Dexter Jackson. Yeah, Dexter Jackson, uh, a little bit uh, of pursuit there early on, giving the defensive line a little bit of pressure in there as well. So it was a good stop by Mexico City. They're going to get the ball back. There might be a little bit of a deeper punt. We're going to have to see how this ball goes, but it's a good start for Mexico City's defense. Ron Van Cleef on to send this one away. Mexico City comes after it, but will not get the block. Fair catch called for right there at the 28-yard line, and that is where the Aztecs will bring out their offense, led by the gunslinger, Matt Wilson, 12th season in the league, all of them, with the Mexico City Aztecs for number 12. Phoenix Jones, the halfback. Ray Bentley, the Hall of Fame fullback. Jason Bartley, Nate Ritters, Jacob McCall, and Fox Highwind are the four receiving threats along with the tight end, Mike Daggs, and Cole Varner does the kicking for this unit. Split backs here to start. Phoenix Jones is the fullback, but they will throw on first down out to Jones. Jones turns the corner, picks up six. Brett, he has the most carries in the Simulation Football League this season so far. Yeah, and through three weeks, he's had 90 carries so far, which, you know, if you do your quick math, that's 30 carries a game. They've heavily really relied on Phoenix Jones, and Phoenix Jones has helped them in the most with uh, as well being in the top three amongst running backs in yardages as well. Wilson will throw this one out. Ray Bentley first down on a very similar play out to the 46-yard line, and the Aztecs moving it through the backfield. And how reliable is Ray Bentley throughout his career? He can catch uh, great footballs on the sidelines and keep running. He's got great jets as a, as a fullback. We've usually seen him as kind of like the, a combination running back fullback whenever uh, whatever uh, whatever team that um, needs him for kind of thing. And uh, Ray Bentley with a nice catch there to get that first down. They'll go empty here. They went to the backs on both the carries, but they're going to spread uh, the backs out here. Here is Wilson to throw. Fires across the middle. Caught Mike Daggs out to the 42. It was only a matter of time before we called the tight end's name. Fourth most touchdowns in the SFL, tied for with three this season. Yeah, and uh, Mike Daggs is one of those guys that's going to be a red zone threat as well as one of those uh, tight ends that if you need a first down, he's going to give it to you. He had... Uh, 27 yards and a touchdown last week. I should expect more from him this week. Give up the middle. Jones through one, and Jones drags defenders for six. These Aztecs have been gaining chunks of yardage. Yeah, and uh, the main thing for Phoenix Jones over the last couple of weeks that we've seen is that uh, Jones keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger with the ball here. He had a lot of big runs trying to shed tackles and dragging defenders down with him last week, and it looks like it's going to be the same this week. Matt Wilson, three of three today, will spread four wide and stand alone in the gun. He's going to throw on the out route, caught beautiful route there. Nate Ritters gets wide open and has first down yardage to the 28. And D.C. looked like they were just doing a, a prevent defense there to not uh, get any deep uh, passes from Matt Wilson to the end zone, which left Ritters open on a mid route out uh, to the sidelines there. And another first down for Mexico City. DC going to play bump coverage here on this one. Here are the Aztecs. They'll go to Mike Daggs right across the middle. That tight end versus linebacker mismatch is good. And Mexico City in the red zone. Yeah, there's a reason why my, um, Mike Daggs is in the Hall of Fame. It's kind of these plays right here that have solidified his career. Just the short streak routes that get uh, himself open, get the first downs, as well as uh, getting those red zone touchdowns. Uh, and we've seen it all throughout his career of being such a deadly threat inside the 20, which is where they are right now. 
3-3 look out of the Dragons. Two in the backfield. They will give Phoenix oh. Jones again. Jones through two. Jones can't fight off the third tackle. Oh, that would have been something. David Leathers brings him down. Yeah, that, and that was a, a last-ditch effort from Leathers to stop Phoenix Jones from getting that first down. Phoenix Jones was just wanting to get six right there, shitting off one, demolishing the second, and mm. Leathers just, just like, I need to stop you as quickly as possible and just drags Jones down. And now Mexico City inside the five. We'll see what happens here. Two in the backfield for Wilson. Dags in at tight end. They give up the middle. Jones going to only get a yard there. He's short. Well, the big thing for DC here is that once they're faced with a little bit of adversity, once they get close to their own end zone here, they've done decent work so far in this season to have goal line stands, uh, especially through these last two weeks. Um, so a uh, good stop uh, on this first down play here. They'll go again, two in the backfield. Mike Daggs on the line on the bottom of your screen. Here's the give. Jones tackled from behind, a yard shy of the line to gain. Nice tackle there coming from the backside by Riley Cues. Yeah, and, the, and again, it was D.C., basically all D.C. defenders getting ready for a Phoenix Jones run here. And Jones did get a couple yards, but it still wasn't paid or at all. So D.C., again, doing a good job to stop them from getting the end zone. Angled off to the right. They bring one receiver on the field now. DC trying to come up with a goal line stop. Wilson going to wow. fire backside. It's caught. Oh, picked off his pocket. That's a touchdown for the Aztecs. And it's Ray Bentley in reception. Man, oh, man, oh, man. I thought that was going to be quite a risky pass. But Ray Bentley got his defender to go the opposite direction, essentially. It was, a, yeah, it was basically a, a fullback linebacker uh, kind of game there and just a, a deflection jumping the wrong way and Bentley gets a little bit out of an easy catch and now Mexico City is on the board here to start this game. The 19th touchdown reception in Ray Bentley's career. Nine seasons in the Simulation Football League. He's got 92 of them on the ground, Brett. Only 19 through the air. That one right there puts Mexico City on top. Seven to nothing to cap off a beautiful drive. Yeah, you put add, add, add uh, 19 to 92, that's 111 total touchdowns. I, I believe that's a very nice number to have throughout your career through nine seasons. Um, a lot of people aspire to have one touchdown, let alone 111 through their career. So fantastic outing <laughs> for Ray Bentley. Certainly nothing to scoff at there. Kick away here from Mexico City, and D.C. will have a, another opportunity to try and get some offense going. Return here out to the 24-yard line, and that is where they will set up. If you're new to the SFL, the Simulation Football League is combining traditional eSports, sports, and a role-playing game all into one. Team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real-life players compete on this virtual gridiron. For more information about the SFL, you can visit our website at simulationfl.net, simulationfl.net. The SFL, we put the fan in fantasy, and Shabazz Synergy puts nine yards on the field on that first throw from scrimmage on this second drive. You know, we, we saw that on the second drive here that uh, Synergy found an open receiver to get a nice gain on there. But now what DC needs to do is they need to continue that momentum and uh, get themselves basically into enemy territory here, which they didn't do on their last drive. We'll have to see how this uh, fares out. They will give it, say, left side with a blocker. Kevin Say out to the 44-yard line. The big run there. Uh, what do you say, Kevin? You want to go left? That's exactly what happened there. So a nice little stretch run for Say and uh, decent blocking to get himself enough space. A juke move that happened on the way there as well. Gets a nice gain. They're getting closer to midfield. And DC, they're doing a better job on this offensive drive already compared to the last one. Second best offense in the Simulation Football League this season. 37.7 points per game through three. Synergy going to take Ooh. a deep shot down the left side. Tipped away. He was testing those rookie defensive backs. 
and it was the cornerback, Gerard Brody, who stood up to the test. Yeah, and we've seen uh, a couple of uh, deep passes already through the first two games today that were easily catchable, but this time Gerard Brody puts his hand out uh, just to deflect that pass out. It almost looked like an easy catch, but Gerard Brody said, not, not this time. 4-2 look out of Mexico City. Doubles from the D.C. offense. Single back is say. Here is Synergy. Throws on the out route. Caught. That is good for two yards. Nothing more than that. It'll bring up third and eight. A nice little uh, inseam route from Mike Churchill there to get a couple yards. Um, but if you're D.C., you kind of want to get that first down because you've had decent momentum to start off this drive and you don't want it to halt it right at midfield. Bunch formation, single receiver out on the top side. Here is Synergy who drops deep. Going to take a deep shot across the middle, in and out of the hands. Jeffrey Dagg supplies the hit. They were trying to connect with Mike Churchill. It was no good. And Churchill had the catch basically ready to go, but Jeffrey Daggs with a spine buster-esque kind of hit on Churchill and basically uh, knocks it out of his hands. And DC once again has to punt the ball. Uh, and they're probably going to want to look to punt it deep so that Mexico City has less of a chance to get another set of points here. Aztecs defense two for two in getting off the field. Two punts now for D.C. to start this game off. Kick is away. Fair catch called for at the 20-yard line. And we'll see if this D.C. Dragons defense can stand up to Mexico City a little bit more. Exodus O'Branis, John Gary are the defensive ends. Isaac Forrester and Benny Butcher, the defensive tackles for the Dragons. Clint Hendershot, Ajamu Afalabi, and Riley Cues are the linebackers. John Tesantis. And David Leathers, along with Peanut Say, the three cornerbacks. Kanye Rockefeller, the veteran free safety. And Jack Russell, the strong safety. Give to Ray Bentley, and Ray Bentley rips off seven. Apparently, uh, it's Bentley Day, Brett. You know what? That should be a national holiday. We need to talk to Cameron Irvine. We need to talk about uh, maybe the entire country in Mexico and turn uh, – August 15th into uh, Ray Bentley day because that was a, a wide open gap for Bentley to run and he just he, he got the yardage and seven yards is a good start to any kind of drive and it sets up a second and short which means an open playbook. We'll see if they continue to utilize him today. He's had a heck of a first quarter. They'll give it to Phoenix Jones. Now the one-two combination, thunder and lightning, 35 out to the 35, another first down for Phoenix Jones. Yeah, and Phoenix Jones and Ray Bentley looks like they're sharing the football here as opposed to last week where it was basically the Phoenix Jones show uh, all throughout the first half here. They're uh, changing it a little bit. They still want to go with that run game, though, because it's been all deadly so far through the first three weeks three weeks for them gun straight look here against a 3-2 out of dc shotgun snap to wilson tight end is there mike daggs first down yardage to the 45 he has caught everything thrown his way today and when you have uh, a set of receivers that are all speed based it's good to see a possession tight end like mike daggs so that when people are focused on the speed of the uh, of the wide receivers and going deep it leaves the tight end open and right now hashtag throw to the TD trending worldwide here's Wilson again his seventh throw seventh completion Phoenix Jones collects that one out to the 40 and will step out of bounds to slow the clock down but Brett it has been all Matt Wilson today he is perfect and Matt Wilson is is carrying through his Good game that he had last week, which saw him run from the end zone to the 25-yard line, and that it's basically give him, given him good luck throughout the rest of that last game and throughout this first quarter as well. That will take us to the end of the first. Aztecs on top, 7-0 over the D.C. Dragons. We will take a short break and be right back. You're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music.
Back here in Mexico City, Andy Hamilton along with Brett Solberg and Mark Mello on stats. Cameron Irvine in the truck producing the games behind us. And Mexico City has the football, and they're still moving, Brett. Three yards on that carry. Yeah, and it's been it's been slow and methodical, the, the first two drives that they've had so far. They've had a lot of possession time already in this game. We were talking in the break. We believe it's around six or seven minutes out of that first quarter that they've had the football already which has been uh, replicated from last week almost. Aztecs controlling the football, controlling the games they've played in. 3-0 undefeated coming into this one. Wilson throws. That is caught across the middle. First down yardage for Phoenix Jones again. He does it both in the air and the ground. Yeah, we've seen a lot, of, a lot on the ground last week, but this time again they're mixing Phoenix Jones up, getting him on the ground as well as in the air to kind of shake up the DC defense, kind of expecting him to uh, just strictly run the football. So nice catch to get that first down. That will set them up at the 27. Wilson fires again, first down yardage once more. Jason Bartley, another completion, and Matt Wilson stays perfect today. Yeah, and Wilson has is, is gotten the time from his offensive line to take a look around to see who's open. And Bartley this time gets himself a step ahead and uh, a nice catch with another first down for Mexico City, and they are threatening inside the red zone. Aztecs having a beautiful start to today's game. DC going to have to find a way to either slow them down or stop them. 9.30 to go here in the second as we get rolling, and Wilson will dump it out again. Ray Bentley collects that one only for a yard before being brought down there on the outside by Leathers. And already um, Ray Bentley getting much more involved in the passing game. He only had two receptions for 12 yards last game. And uh, he's already got about three or four receptions here today. So he's getting way more involved than he did last week. Now they'll go with a spread look. Wilson will change the play at the line. Nickel look out of the defense. Short drop, quick throw on the out route caught. That'll be good for a few. It is Jason Bartley who collects another one. The SFL certified out routes, as you can see for Jason Bartley there, gets himself a nice catch, kind of slides his body to the uh, out of bounds sideline there. Right. It does uh, stop the clock before they uh, get to the line there. But again, Mexico City, a lot of momentum on their side right now with this slow drive. Gun split twins look here for Matt Wilson. DC trying to defend. Here is Wilson to throw, fires across the middle. A bullet right into the hands of the receiver, down to the one. What a toss to Nate Ritter. Somehow the rookie held on. Yeah, and uh, even if you think that Matt Wilson is getting a little bit up in the age bracket there, he might be in his 12th season, he still has an arm like a rookie. He just absolute laser beam of a pass to Ritter's to get them to the one. Now they'll go heavy in the backfield. Here's the give left side. Phoenix Jones walks it in. Touchdown, Mexico City. They extend the lead. Yeah, he, he could have brought a suitcase there for uh, Phoenix Jones to just walk his way through the end zone there. Um, a great, slow, methodical, tiring drive for Mexico City, uh, making DC play uh, DC's defense play for as long as possible to get them tired. That shed off a good three minutes on the second quarter and probably another minute and a half, two minutes uh, from the end of the first quarter there. So another long, methodical drive, uh, which Mex it's what Mexico City wants. They want to have the ball as much as possible here, and now they're up two scores. It was the ninth touchdown for Phoenix Jones this season, top of the league. He was top of the league the year before, Brett. He is a touchdown machine. Oh, absolutely. It's it's one of those things where um, you can almost say there's three things guaranteed in life, death, taxes, and uh, Phoenix Jones rushing touchdown. Um, it's, it's always great to see running back touchdowns in the SFL, no matter uh, what team it is from. Had eight over the first three games, now has nine in four, and we haven't even made it to the halfway point. Kick away here dragon's gonna bring it out across the 20 across the 25 spins oh, oh still alive and off to the races across there it the is. field this one's gonna go the other way a huge touchdown for the veteran kanye rockefeller strikes and the dc dragons right back into it 
You want to get back in the game as quickly as possible? Give it to the hands of Kanye Rockefeller on special teams. A nice job by the special teams unit to give him enough space down the middle. Uh, he had to spin through one of the defenders there, but once he got through, there was a ton of space, a ton of open field. And now with Kanye Rockefeller bringing this team back, there has to be some uh, a big morale boost to the sidelines of DC's offense, knowing that they have support from their special teams and coming from their kick returner, who's one of their safeties, coming in and basically getting them six points to get them back in this game. If the offense can't get going, see if your special teams can give you a spark. That is just what the visiting Dragons did. They silenced the crowd here for a game that was all Mexico City to this point. Pati Pati adds the extra point, and it is now 7-14. to 14. And, Brett, at 14 nothing, you just felt the momentum kind of lean one way. But Kanye says, hold on just a minute. We're not done. Yeah, when you look at 14 nothing, the DC the DC sidelines kind of went like, ah, oh, okay. But then they see Kanye Rockefeller, and they're jumping in the sidelines. It's like it's basically two different kind of feelings when you when you go from allowing another touchdown to uh, getting a kick return touchdown, essentially. So DC's back in this. Return here coming for Mexico City out to the 24. Visit the SFL League website at simulationfl.net for info on how to create a player, how to join our community, the league, and the teams that play in it. You can also view a comprehensive history of the SFL. It's over 1,500 games and are thousands of players who have hit the virtual field. The Simulation Football League, 17 seasons strong. Well, it was 12 seasons for Kanye Rockefeller, who just returned that kick to make it 7-14. to 14. It's 12 seasons for Matt Wilson, who gives to Phoenix Jones to start this drive off a couple of veterans they've gone at it quite a few times brett and uh they're battling today as rockefeller the only one to score for dc yeah and uh it's it, you never expect to be that kind of tale of the tape um uh wilson versus rockefeller but uh thinking about it again if rockefeller gets an interception from matt wilson he can talk to the social media all that he wants saying that i got one up on him kind of thing here is the give. Phoenix Jones bounces off one, gliding through the defense, and he is out to the 45. Yeah, and Phoenix Jones having a great day so far. That's, uh, I believe he's close to 90 all-purpose yards at this point, uh, getting also 31 in the air as, uh, so far as well. So Phoenix Jones having another great first half like he did uh, last week where he had over 130 yards of rushing up to that point. So Phoenix Jones, uh, again, he's gonna he's already an early MVP candidate, and he's, and he's solidifying it already this uh, first half. In the backfield again, another give to Jones. Jones ooh, had the potential to break out there, finally gets brought down. This DC Dragons team having trouble stopping the running game. Yeah, and um, it's just more so Phoenix Jones just getting through. Like It, it looked like he went through all 12 defenders there and, sh and shed basically 11 of them until the 12th man basically got to him. So it's, it's uh, crazy. They've handed the ball off 11 times, only thrown it 13. Nice balance. That's the 12th run of the day. And Jones has another first down out to the 42 before he's finally brought down by O'Brannon. And again, it's just been slow and methodical for Mexico City. They're getting these nice six, seven, eight yard gains. They're getting first down. They're sh uh, shedding the clock even more. It's just, it's demoralizing when you're on the other side of the football trying to stop that kind of offense. They put you to sleep and they spread you out wide. Here's Wilson to throw again. Ray Bentley, another catch. That one good for seven. And again, it's another seven yards from Mexico City. It's basically a repeat performance of what we saw last week from Mexico City. We, we have to remember, they absolutely dominated last week against Las Vegas in the possession time. They had over 30 minutes of possession time, and it's looking to be the same here uh, in this game. Split backs, Wilson will stand with Mike Daggs on the line here to the bottom of the screen. Give Phoenix Jones with room, tackled from behind at the 28. Looked like he might break out again, and Mexico City just continues to pound the rock. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, that's, that's exactly the, the sentence that I was going to say. If Phoenix Jones keeps 
running down the middle and gets you those six, seven, eight yard gains, you, you keep going with it, especially when you want to shed the clock like they're doing right now. Three receivers wide. Wilson stands in the pocket to throw. Oh. Floats one backside. Picked off. Intercepted the other way. A big break for DC. One of the biggest plays that changes momentum as Jack Russell takes it away. And Jack Russell has had quite the season for him so far uh, defensively as he's had uh, four interceptions so far in this uh, before this game started, second in the league, and now he's got number five. He's been a big threat in terms of uh, DC secondary, so that's a big momentum change as well. So now DC's offense has to uh, deliver so that they can get back in this game. Momentum change is the right word. DC takes over, down by seven with the football at their own 22. Five-step drop for Synergy. Fires one across the middle, Ooh. almost taken away. There were plenty of red jerseys all around there, and he could not find Josh Gill. Yeah, and then, then Josh Gill, he had a big game last week, and so far he hasn't had a catch so far in this game. But uh, a little bit of a risky pass from Synergy as that ball was in the air. Four defenders were around Josh Gill. And uh, just a deflection goes down to the ground, and then now it's a second and ten. Bunch formation, bottom of the screen, single receiver to the top. Say offset to the left against a 3-2. Synergy fires. Oh, deflected away beautifully, cutting underneath it there on the near side was Dorian Locke, the strong safety, getting some playing time, and that makes up third and ten. Yeah, that was that was just easy recognition from Dorian Locke there. He stayed uh, basically in between right. the ball and his man, and once that ball went in the air, he just deflected it, jumped a little bit, and uh, batted it down. Four receivers wide. Trips formation against a 3-3 here for the Mexico City Aztecs. Here is the play action from Synergy. Moves in the pocket, floats back side, almost taken away. It was KT Harrell, and she would have been running towards the end zone there had she made the play. Yeah, and an easy opportunity for KT Harrell there. Um, not known for many interceptions, I don't believe. So maybe a little bit of jitters that happened beforehand uh, as the hands were going up and it just, uh, just kind of butterfingered the way out. DC's drive stalls. The Aztecs put the clamps on after throwing an interception. And this punt will go back towards Mexico City. Return out to the 45. And let's send it to Cameron Irvine in the truck for a game break. Cam? Thanks, Andy. Mike, it's a hack attack in Texas. Yeah, Cam, Fort Worth struggled in the passing game last weekend. But here we are early in this ball game. First drive out of the shoot. Uh, they find Stephen Hacker in the corner of the end zone. Florida, I'm sorry, Fort Worth goes up early on Florida. Florida had to punt too, so Fort Worth got the ball back near midfield. Back to Andy and Brett in Mexico. Back here south of the Texas border in Mexico City, Matt Wilson firing right off the bat again, finds Jason Bartley. Yeah, and uh, last week it was a heavy dose of Fox Highwind uh, getting a lot of these short to medium routes here. This time they shift their gears towards Jason Bartley, who's had a couple receptions already in this game. He's up to three, and uh, Mexico City uh, doing a great job spreading the football around, and I, I would want to say this time, watch out for the Jones Show. Two in the backfield. They are going to throw out of it. Going to take a deep shot down the scene. Caught! Mike Daggs! Must him and he's into the end zone. 20 to 7. Aztecs extend their lead again to the tight end. As much as we say that Mike Daggs is a possession receiver, we can forget sometimes that he can get a little bit of a burst of speed as well. Daggs gets himself open. The safeties were a little bit late on there. As you can see, Jack Russell wasn't really expecting it as uh, Daggs gets the catch, and he had about 10, 12 yards left to run, and it was just a straight line to the end zone. Mexico City, all the momentum is back on their side. Gets behind the safety and is able to make the play there. Mike Daggs the veteran and the best friend of Matt Wilson. The two connect for six points. It's Matt Wilson's second passing touchdown of this half. And with 4.02 in the second, the extra point from Varner is up and good. Visit the SFL, uh, excuse me, coming up on the 
APM Music Halftime Report. Cameron Irvine and Mike St. Green break down the first half of the game between Fort Worth and Florida. Check out the top 10 plays from the SFL season and provide an update on the action going on uh, between Florida and Fort Worth, which we saw a highlight from just a minute ago, Brett. It's all coming up. APM Music Halftime Report. This return for Rockefeller has another spin, two spins. Oh, oh man, you got to be careful. Rockefeller looked like he was ready to go for number two on this one here. A couple spin moves around, and he almost had the separation to go through it again, but just a last-ditch effort by one of the special team's defenders to kind of stop him in his tracks. But nonetheless, it's still pretty decent field position for DC to start the drive. Shabazz Synergy, 5 of 10, 27 yards passing today. Very small on the yards per attempt. He's going to go deep here right off the bat, and he overthrew the receiver. Could not connect with Josh Gill, was trying to take a chance. And again, it's another deep pass to Josh Gill. They're trying to get him going. He hasn't had a catch yet in this game, and uh, the best way to get in the game is a deep catch. So I like the idea from Synergy and the D.C. offensive uh, coaching staff to get him involved in some way after a big game. But right now, the secondary unit for New Mexico City is up to the task. Two in the backfield, two tight ends on the field. Here is Synergy to throw again. Pressure coming, floats backside corner, tipped up Ooh. and incomplete. Could not connect with West Cloud there. The defense for the Aztecs stays good. Watson in the area. Yeah, this time they're looking to go deep again. We haven't seen two straight deep throws from Synergy. This time we get it, two incompletions, unfortunately. But again, that secondary unit for Mexico City is ready for those deep passes, it looks like. So DC is going to have to shake things up here a little bit to get those passes. Gun straight look on third and ten. Shotgun here is Synergy stands, floats across oh. the middle, tipped up and incomplete. Looks like it hit the receiver in the hands. Brett could not come down with it. Churchill. Yeah, when you have when you have your hands up for more of a scooping catch on one of those throws, you have to make sure it doesn't hit your wrists. And I believe that's exactly what happened there. Churchill had bounced off his wrists and about three to four yards ahead of him, so he couldn't even dive to to uh, try to catch it. It's just a very unfortunate catch and a very unfortunate punting situation for DC. Scripted him open with the route, could not hold on to the football, and DC's drive stalls out down by two scores. Kick is away, fair catch called for at the 34-yard line, and Brett, this DC team just feels like they're one play away. Yeah, and that's all it is, is that they just need to grab some form of separation and they'll be good. But Mexico City's doing a great job, especially their secondary. They have stepped up in this first half to limit the uh, openness of the receivers for DC. Aztecs at 3 0, the favorites by six points over the 2 1 DC Dragons. Bump formation here for DC playing man. Wilson fires on the backside, Ooh. almost taken away. Rockefeller, the two veterans combine on the play and it's a deflection Rockefeller gets the best of Wilson there almost baited him into throwing it yeah you can you could tell that Rockefeller wanted that one too like he was diving to grab that ball and everything uh just to either stop it or even uh get the interception uh David Leather was uh, was also on that but most of it was done by Rockefeller with that diving deflection four receivers wide here for Wilson single back is Jones nickel look here Wilson play action fires across the middle wide open receiver there Bartley with another grab down to the 48 his fourth of the day that's a that's a big catch coming from Bartley there we didn't see him again we didn't see him too much last week because of Fox Highwind's impressive performance but this time he's getting himself open the the wide receiver two three option looking to be open a little bit more uh DC more so looks like focusing on Highwind so it's leaving Bartley and Ritter's open a little bit more and Mexico City, once again, another first down. Split backs in the backfield for Matt Wilson. 3-3 three, three look here out of D.C.'s defense. Here is the throw from Wilson out to Phoenix Jones, who stands up, picks up five. CM Hoon, one underscore 45 in the chat, wants to know, are these real people playing? Everyone on the field that you see is representing a person who created their player on the field. They join teams via the draft after playing in the SFL minor league, and then they compete on the pro level. Brett, 
you have a player in the league, and you've been here quite a long time. It feels like I'm ancient history at this point. <laughs> Not as long as Matt Wilson, though. Hand off to mm -hmm. Phoenix Jones. Jones up the middle will get to the 35, and people find our league in a litany of ways, one of which is watching us right here on TV. Anyone watching can head over to our league website, simulationfl.net, and you can sign up to create your own player. You get to pick all your equipment, and an SFL team someday may offer you a contract. And you can even find this league through a Google search, which is what happened to me back in uh, 2017. There you go. Many different ways and many different stories of how people find our wonderful league. But once you're here, we'd like to keep you here. Phoenix Jones running through defenders. He picks up eight. Yeah, Phoenix Jones just getting everything that he wants right now. Uh, the, the last two plays there, he's been just absolutely demolishing uh, defenders just uh, basically with one of those shoulder uh, tackles uh, right uh, shoulder to shoulder just amazing work. two minutes to go here in Mexico City 21-7 the Aztecs on top we'll be right back after a short break Back here in Mexico City, second and two for the Aztecs with two minutes on the clock and a 14-point lead here at home. Wilson will spread three receivers out wide and face four rushers from D.C. He's going to throw it outside. That is caught. Ray Bentley, first down and more into the red zone. Oh, daddy. Ray Bentley has been all involved throughout the offense of Mexico City, whether it be those tough fullback runs down the middle or these nice little flat to out routes um, right uh, to the sidelines there but he's had a much heavier involvement in this game which has led to Mexico City's success three receivers wide here looking to throw moves in the pocket Wilson fires down underneath caught first down down to the eight Ritters there yeah, Nate Ritters with a nice uh, little bit of separation from David Leathers there um, to give himself enough separation for Wilson to throw, who has been deadly accurate so far. Only two incompletions so far in this game, if I'm not mistaken. And he's just he's found the receivers uh, with just deadly accuracy. 90% from what we have on our stat struck. Uh, Tried it to the stat struck today. Deadly accurate indeed. We'll see where they go. They're going to go to the air here. Flyers it out. Ray Bentley, another catch. But right there to make the tackle immediately was a Jamu Afalabi. 
Yeah, this time they were, they were seeing that uh, Ray Bentley's had a few too many receptions for what they're liking there. And this time off a lobby gets himself involved in the in the tackling game here, basically stopping uh, Bentley right at the line of scrimmage. He'll spread three wide again. Two in the backfield is Bentley and Jones. Short drop here. Toss outside. Caught and stepping out of bounds there is Jason Bartley. He has been a reception machine today. Yeah, he's got five already here, averaging 11 yards per reception already through this first half. And uh, Mexico City's just inching forward, inching forward, inching forward. I almost want to say they're getting uh, prepared for a, a quick uh, Phoenix going scamper, but they're got, they got the shotgun ready here. Empty set here for Matt Wilson. Four receivers wide and a gun straight. Mike Dags on the line, too. Here's Wilson, fires across the oh. middle and picked off. An errant throw is intercepted by DC. Peanut say, say it ain't so. Say it ain't so, Mr. Peanut say. Absolutely what the doctor ordered for DC. The slow and methodical drive for Mexico City halts to a grinding stop as uh, Matt Wilson's throw, as much, uh, accurate, as much of an accurate passer he's been so far today. Oh, hold on. Been... Sorry, Brett. We're, we're going to pause you there. Apparently, that was a safety for Mexico City. I, I didn't think Say had made it out of the end zone, but they said that he made it out and was tackled back inside. It's two points for the Aztecs. Oh my lord, um, I would heavily disagree with you on that. I would be yelling at the referees, I would be yelling at the booth, I would be yelling at uh, everyone's parents to see if they can join me in this battle. Oh my, that's so, that's so demoralizing for DC. I, I have no words, I don't know where the ruling was coming from. I'd love to see a replay, I'm sure someone in the chat will clip that and we'll take a look at it later on our SFL Discord community, but unfortunate turn of events for dc right when they think they have the break it goes right back to mexico city that that's that's crazy um like that that's the last thing dc wants at this point is to allow a safety like we would we're gonna have to talk to uh the sfl board on this one to see if we can uh change things up unfortunately we can't but i'd be fighting for the next three years about this Four receivers wide for Wilson. All D.C. can do is continue to play football. Jones will return it off to the left side, and he'll step out of bounds at midfield. Yeah, and then going back right to Phoenix Jones here, who has had prob is probably already at triple digits when it comes to uh, all-purpose yards. At 88 plus 36, that's well over 100 yards. So he's having himself another great first half, and it's it, it's he's one of the catalysts for Mexico City's offense. Definitely a workhorse back, which they utilize well. Now up 23-7. to seven. Wilson to throw again. Stands the pocket. Delivers. Another first down strike there to Fox Highwind. And now they'll go hurry up. We haven't seen too much of Fox Highwind. They have less than a minute to go. They're going to go hurry up here. First catch for Highwind today. Here's Wilson to throw again. And he fires. And Highwind has a second catch right after the first. Back to the line, it goes Wilson. 4-2 look here, Wilson to throw, stands the pocket, delivers, tipped and incomplete. Defense there makes the play, Ajamu off a lobby and coverage on Nate Ritters. It's a, it's a big stop for DC as Mexico City was going with the hurry up and trying to get forward as quickly as possible. Now down to 34 seconds here, they need one more stop to possibly, probably force a field goal uh, from Mexico City here so uh, a big opportunity to stop uh mexico city in their tracks for dc's defense 34 seconds on the clock for wilson and this offense four down linemen for dc they're going to bring some late blitzers wilson pressured shakes off one stands in the pocket and throws away a veteran play to give the aztecs a chance at a field goal how does matt wilson do this like we've seen him shed sacks last week against Las Vegas about four or five times, even in the end zone to prevent safeties. And he did, he does it again here with pressure coming from both sides. There was three defenders around him and he still manages to throw the ball away in safety. Wilson able to shake and bake and it sets up Mexico city and Cole Varner for a long field goal attempt. 
Varner sends this one on its way and puts it through. The Hall of Famer scores from 43 to give Mexico City a 26-7 lead over the D.C. Dragons. Yeah, and, and D.C. Uh, did a great job on this drive um, to kind of halt Mexico City even though they were threatening. Um, only to get three points here, but if you're DC, you, you need to grab some points here before you end the half here. So 22 seconds. Let's see how far uh, Rockefeller does for you. Kanye has returned one today. Can't put it past him to be a threat to take another one back, although rare that we see a player able to do two in one uh, game return here for Rockefeller spins once shakes and bakes out to the 29 he certainly has been a weapon for DC and with 17 seconds they have all three timeouts to work with Shabazz synergy though only 27 yards today yeah and it's been 5 of 13 passing as well so he's not been uh, as accurate as even last week where even even then he was having a a less than stellar day so it's it's not looking great for synergy so far two in the backfield say they're going to give it to say on a power play say with blockers tevin say Ooh. across midfield of the 49 and they are going not to take time a out, time, out. time out time out they time are out, going time to out. try and get back to the line synergy will rush them up and now we'll use the timeout with three seconds P poor clock management from the dragons no, that's that's exactly not what you wanted there. I say after the tackle, call the timeout now because Say has to get up still and get back to the line if you're gonna go if you're gonna go hurry up. So that was it's not a great decision from DC to see if they can go hurry up on it, and it led to them going from basically having a play in a, from uh, 11 seconds ago from basically only getting one play, which I don't think is even in a hail mary range. We'll set them up. To try a Hail Mary attempt, Shabazz Synergy will try and send it out. Tallest receiver for DC is Mike Churchill at 6'4", or, or West Cloud, but it won't matter. Down goes Synergy. A stack there coming for the Aztec. Skyler Kingsley ends the half. 26-7, to Aztecs on top as he fights through this guard and is just able to bring him down to end the half, a one that is dominated by Mexico City. The S APM Music SFL Halftime Report is next with Cameron Irvine and Mike St. Green right after this break. Welcome to the APM Music Halftime. 
Report along with Mike St. Green. I am Cameron Irvine. And, uh, wow, uh, the first half from hell for the D.C. Dragons. Uh, it was, uh, uh, let's focus as uh, Mexico City has a 26-7 lead at the break. Let's focus on that bizarre call that gave Mexico City a safety. Mike, I, I didn't see him uh, ever leave the end zone except to be pushed forward out of, out of a tackle. I, I just don't understand it. Yeah, Cam, just when we, you know, thought we were going to come into the half and talk about the dominating performance by uh, Mexico City, uh, R62 uh, rears his ugly head, and and I'm pretty sure this uh, officiating crew is going to be admonished by the league <laughs> sometime this week. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I never saw uh, Peanut uh, exit the end zone uh, at all, but if, if, if he would have, you would have thought he would have gotten forward progress and uh, D.C. would take over possession from there, you know, and it, it was uh, – a tough call for DC as you know, because, you know, Mexico city has totally dominated this half and, and it looked like they, maybe they could uh, steal some of the momentum, but you know, a, a strange call and uh, no one can figure out, you know, what happened there, but uh, you know, DC will have a chance to bounce, bounce back in the second half, but yeah, that was uh, a momentum killer right there. We'll talk about Mexico city's dominance before we get to the end of the half and get you an update on Florida and Fort Worth. But for now uh, we wanted to sit down with the head coach of the Queen City Corsairs, Chris Kamasak. The Corsairs are undefeated in the SFL so far at 3-0, and the first time that Queen City's been unde uh, unbeaten through three weeks in over three years. And Kamasak's had it all going on for the Corsairs. They take on the Atlanta Swarm later this evening. Uh, and we sat down with uh, Kamasak to, uh, to get his thoughts on Queen City's hot start. Take a listen. And here today on the SFL Halftime Report is the head coach of the Queen City Corsairs, the 3-0 Queen City Corsairs, Chris Kamasak. Chris, how are you? Oh, good. How are you, Cam? I'm great. Hey, Chris. How are you, how are you man? And glad, glad you could come on with us today. Oh, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm glad you guys made it back safe and sound from Houston. Well, I didn't have far to travel. I only had 20 minutes up, from, yeah, the, I know. up the road from, from the resort to uh Well, from to what I heard was going on home. there, it's it's probably good that you still made yeah. it back home today. Yeah, probably was a good thing. Hey, man, first question out of, out of the gate, uh, you know, as Cam mentioned, you guys off to a 3 you know, start, new head coach over in Queen City. Are you surprised at all by the 3 and 0 start that you guys have had over there uh, so far this season? Um if you had asked me at the beginning of the season, I, I probably would have been the only one. Maybe maybe the front office. We, we, we are a pretty confident bunch. But, uh, you know, 3 0, uh, it's kind of nice. Uh, I, I, I thought last weekend was the one fly in the ointment if we were going to have a chance to go 3 0 for the first three games of the season. And, uh, you know, Eddie gave us a really tough, tough time. But, uh, you know, we managed to come out. It seems like every game, mm -hmm. well, well, week two excluded but it seems like uh, a lot of these games we find ways of getting ourselves in trouble and then get us out of trouble by the end of the game mike who was that in week two that they that the yeah I, it, it slips my mind i have no idea who they beat in week two uh, chris uh, just to piggyback off that question are you surprised about your division right now the north division is the toughest in the sfl everyone's two and one or better yeah uh last night uh Tom Riddell and I did a podcast, uh, our, our Crow's Nest podcast, and I said, you know, last season I was at Fort Worth, and it was considered to be one of the toughest, if not the toughest divisions in, in the SFL. It's like I, I go to the north, and tough followed me. How does that happen? I mean, it's just it's crazy. Uh, you know, we've got we, you know, we're gonna we're gonna earn whatever we get in in, in the north this year. Yeah, and Chris, you just mentioned uh, Fort Worth and, and leaving there uh, and coming over to Queen City. Uh, was that a tough decision at all, leaving a team like that? You know, uh, good roster. You you made the playoffs with that team last season. Um, was it a tough decision to leave and, and, and move on and say, I'm going to take out, take on this challenge in, in, in Buffalo? Well, it was a decision that was was made for me by by the front office in Fort Worth. They They were they decided they wanted to go a different direction with the coaching staff. So uh, they, they put a call in to Eric Barkley, the owner of Queen City, and said, hey, you should really give Chris, Chris a call and talk to him because we think that might be a good fit. And uh, Eric did, and we, we spoke. And uh, so it, wasn't a, it was difficult in that I found out I was being released from, uh, from Fort Worth. But uh, 
uh, after that, it, it wasn't too difficult because uh, I found somebody that wanted me. So, Chris, what is it like? Uh, what's it like coaching for Queen City, playing for Queen City, the only team to win four titles? Uh, you know, being on the staff with Hall of Famer Eric Barkley and trying to get this team back to dominance. I mean, is there is there any pressure there? Is it is it all? I mean, just what is it like? Because it's uh, it's so rare that uh, we get a chance to talk to someone who's uh, you know entrenched in that organization. Well, um, Eric's really been um, – I, I think after the last two seasons, Eric just decided, you know what, something's wrong. And um, he he brought in uh, – I, I got to hand it to him. I don't know how you pull in four guys from four different teams and, and, and put together a front office like the front office that we have right now. Um, but there was no pressure uh, when we when we got in there we all pretty much looked at the situation and said we team only won four games last season. So it's a kind of low bar to, to, to improve. But we all felt like we could be a lot better than uh, we were, but we, we didn't feel the pressure to have to be a whole lot better. We, it was a, a process, you know, to borrow from my, my Philadelphia 76ers. It's a process. And, uh, we expected that we were going to, you know, one, two, maybe three seasons before we got ourselves to where we really wanted to be uh, to get us back into that upper echelon of, of SFL teams. And yeah, Chris, as we talk about, you know, three and O and coaching expectations, uh, let's, let's look at your matchup this week to possibly go four and O uh, you have Atlanta. They seem to have bounced back. They're off to a, a pretty hot two and one start. Uh, their only loss coming in, a, you know, a, a, a last away. second field goal yeah, to, uh, in week one. Uh, what do you see out of this matchup this week coming from, uh, you know, Mark Chisholm, who we know he's going to be, uh, you know, prepared and, and ready to go. What do you expect to see out of Atlanta this weekend? They're just a they're a good team, top to bottom. Uh, offensively, they've got they've got stars at, at every skill position. Uh, you, you, they they sort of remind me of us a little bit. You know, you, you go out to try to stop DDG, they hit you with with Falco and and uh, and Boo and and now Roosevelt uh, and and the tight end Wooding. I mean, it's just pick your poison. And we we always joke about that's our that's our offense. Pick your poison. And then on defense, yeah, I mean, they've just they've got guys everywhere that just shut you down. So um, yeah, I, I I spent a lot. Of, fortunately, you know, last week the playbooks had to be in early, which gave me several extra days to think about about uh, Atlanta. Uh, so I've been scratching my head all week. I think we've got together a, a pretty decent playbook, but um, no, it's 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 going to be a dogfight. Uh, I, I expect a close game, and uh, whoever wins will have have earned it Chris last question for you who's uh who's maybe an underrated player or a person on your staff that you don't think gets uh, as much love as they should um you know I know it's early in the season but uh football's a team sport and I know the Queen City's got a lot of people um on this team and in their organization that uh you know yeah. you don't get to three and all by accident so who might be one of those people well actually I, I I'd hate to single out one I, I'd have to say the entire front office I mean Jay Hayden came over from Baltimore, uh, transitioned from tight end to wide receiver. I'm pretty sure he was hoping to be at least a wide receiver three this season, but because of the way the draft broke, uh, we came up with an idea to go four wide receivers at the last moment, and uh, he agreed to go be that fourth wide receiver as, to make room for a third wide receiver. But he's uh, uh, an awesome scout. He and I work together each week, and uh, he has prepared me to, to put together a good playbook. Hubba Kimbrell, uh, he's our tight end too, so he doesn't see a whole lot of love right now. But this guy's got more contacts than the CIA. Uh, <laughs> he, he I, I joke sometimes, it's like, boy, I would really like to have this on the team. And he just throws out two or three names. I'm like, no, I wasn't serious. He's like, no, I can talk to him if you want. I, can pr I probably can get one of them. And I'm like, and he bailed us out. He pulled our bacon out of the fire uh, two, three times during the off season as we were getting ready for for the draft uh, because we had people leave at the last moment. Uh, we weren't expecting all this type of stuff. And he, he just, he's great. You know, uh, we, we had to release our kicker this, uh, this week because he missed, he missed two uh, check-ins and Hubba found somebody. 
Hubba found a kicker for us that we can bring in, we can progress. Um, Tom Riddell has been great putting together uh, our communications effort. The the podcast, if people haven't seen it, the Crow's Nest, he keeps making it better every week. This week's is, is, is awesome. Not because I'm on it, but it's awesome. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, BJ, what can, you, what can you say about BJ? He's, he's, he's a, the, the man with the plan, as we like to say it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm missing somebody, uh, but it, it's been, um, it's been a great effort by everyone. Uh, so I, I, I just say that the, the whole, the whole front office, Eric, you know, he's the, the, the most interesting owner in the world. We like to call him. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, as you said, it's a team thing. And so it's not just one person that that's going unsung. I think that that entire front office, if we sing enough praises of them, they, they will, they will not be unsung anymore. Um, on the field, everybody's pitching in, uh, Kappa Jones, I want to say something nice about him because he agreed to, to play that nickel spot, uh, when he could have played starting free safety somewhere else or starting strong safety somewhere else for another team. Uh, you know, a DJ Majesty for giving up his linebacker to come play defensive end and have to rebuild his player. Uh, I think he's going to be a great defensive end for us, but it's going to take some time. I could just, the list is long. Yeah, I could I mean, just keep going on. That's what it takes uh, to build exactly. a, to build a champion. Is a lot of uh, unselfish play and a lot of uh, cohesion and coming together and all that good stuff. So, Chris, yep. we wish you all the best uh, this season. Thanks for stopping by to chat with us and uh, cool. and good luck against Atlanta this week. All right, thanks for having me. Uh, good luck to you guys, too. Uh, Chris Kompasak, a good guy. We wish uh, Queen City all the best um, uh, tonight against Atlanta and hope for a good game there and for the rest of the season. Hey, Mike, uh, how about some uh, uh, crazy stat here from the first half? Matt Wilson has 26 completions, and Shabazz Synergy has 27 passing yards. What does D.C. Wow. have to do to uh, stop the bleeding here because the Aztecs have been as efficient as possible? Uh, take the ball out of uh, Matt Wilson's hands and this, uh, you know, this efficient offense. Put it in the offense. Phoenix Jones hands? Yeah, well, <laughs> it, well, it, well, get it out of, you know, this uh, Mexico City offense's hands, you know, all the way around. Uh, you know, let's see more of uh, Kevin Say in this offense on the ground, maybe pound out some clock, control some clock. Uh, and maybe, you know, they, they do have a couple of turnovers, but maybe this time on a turnover, catch a break and, uh, you know, something like that will, you know, will get them back in this game because basically the only offense right now has been the Kanye Rockefeller, uh, you know, kick return. So, you know, we got to see more out of this offense, get Kevin Say involved, you know, uh, maybe get some short passes here or there, control some clock and uh, keep this uh, uh, Mexico City offense off the field. A lot of running in defense in Fort Worth right now. That game is 7-7. Seven to seven. Bullet Bolesky added a touchdown for Florida. Fort Worth is driving into Florida territory right now. But that game is already in the third quarter. So we'll have plenty of game updates in the second half uh, to keep you updated on that because bonus coverage is unlikely. After the break, uh, Andy Hamilton, Brett Solberg with the second half. Mexico City, D.C. as the Dragons try and mount to come back. Otherwise, D.C. or excuse me, Mexico City is going to remain unbeaten and join Baltimore amongst the ranks at 4-0. This has been the APM Music Halftime Report, and we'll be right back. You're watching the Simulation Football League on For the Fans.
Week four simulation football league action continues here live from Mexico City, Mexico. I'm Andy Hamilton. Joining me in the booth is Brett Solberg, Mark Mello on the stats, Cameron Irvine producing the game behind the scenes, and DC will kick it off to Mexico City to start this second half. Return here coming out to the 23, and Brett, it was all Aztecs to start this game, and it'll be all Aztecs to start this third quarter. Yeah, it's exactly what Mexico City wanted. Before uh, we head to the halftime break with uh, Cam and Mike, we saw a quick glimpse at the time of possession comparisons. 16 minutes to 6 in favor of Mexico City. It's what they want, and they're going to keep going with this in the second half. Four receivers wide. Wilson in the shotgun here on first and 10. Pumps once, pressure in his face. Fires a completion out to the top side. Nate Ritters complete there that wasn't just pressure in his face that was pressure up his, in his breath that was pursuit from three different defensive linemen coming in and uh wilson still gets that ball out and gives it to redders for that first down and again all the momentum still staying on mexico city's side as they get this quick first down uh catch to uh a, another great decent field position Huge play there from Matt Wilson to unload that ball, and Ritters finds the open spot and is able to move the chains to the 41. Three receivers out here for Wilson to throw again. Another out route there is complete. Fox Highwind picks up five to the 46. Yeah, and Highwind going with that out route there. Um, that catch should have him now over 2,000 receiving yards for his career, so uh, big ups to him for getting to that point. Um, but all, all in all, he's had a relatively quiet game because of how open Jason Bartley's been in this game. Two receivers top of the screen. Wilson dumps out to Jones. Oh. Jones! Embarrass is a linebacker and has a first down. My lord, Phoenix Jones just has newfound strength. I don't think we even saw that much uh, strength from Phoenix Jones last week when he put over a, 190 yards uh, running over there. Just absolutely demolishes him. That that shoulder tackle has been uh, so reliable for him throughout this game. He's done that a couple times, uh, especially in the second quarter, and he does it again today. Um, he's definitely had a big part in this Mexico City offense. Three receivers wide. Nickel look here again for D.C. Two in the backfield for Wilson to throw. Fires Nate Ritters. Another catch there on the outside, and he has and pushes for first down yardage. Excuse me, check that. It's Jason Bartley. Yeah, and Bartley just pushing and pushing and pushing his way, and I think that's been the separation between Mexico City and D.C. Mexico City's players are keep pushing and grinding to get those first down yardages, while D.C., while they're trying, they're just not getting at they're just not getting ahead unfortunately and mexico city now in enemy territory is uh, once again threatening three three look here for dc wilson fires tipped away incomplete clint hendershot deflects that one away from ritters we haven't seen too much from clint hendershot in this game so far um just uh, a, a handful of tackles from him we haven't seen him too much in the coverage game um but it's a good uh, way to kind of halt the momentum from Mexico City a little bit here to stop that pass from when uh, for where Matt Wilson has been super accurate so far. 9.03 to go here in the third quarter, early stages of the third, and Mexico City moving the ball. Ray Bentley out of the backfield, has first down yardage, down to the 24-yard line, shows a little burst of speed. Yeah, and then most fullbacks are more like very much power based. But you got to rem remember, Ray Bentley was once uh, one of the best uh, running backs in the game, and now he's uh, gone to fullback, and he still has that speed within him to get basically turn one yard plays into ten yard plays, and that's exactly what happened here. Mexico City just continues on from where they left off in this first half. Able to move the chains, sets up. A new set of downs here with 8.48 to go. Four down linemen for D.C. Another give to Phoenix Jones up the middle. Jones fights through tacklers and picks up seven. It's just a, a healthy dose of Phoenix Jones now, whether it be uh, on the ground or in the air. This time he gets a very nice uh, separation down the middle there. Um, 
almost a parting of the Red Sea to get uh, Phoenix Jones to uh, a seven-yard gain there. So good work by the offensive line for Mexico City, giving so much uh, space for Phoenix Jones throughout this game. Tyler Kane in the offensive line leading the way. 3-3 look here out of the Dragons again. Another give to Jones. Jones right up the middle like a hot knife to butter. Has the first down and down to the 11. And it's it's just been difficult for D.C. to slow down Phoenix Jones or really anyone in the rushing game. Yeah, and, Fe and Phoenix Jones has uh, developed great awareness over these past couple seasons, especially... Uh, knowing where your open gaps are, and it, we're seeing a fine example of that in this drive. Four wide here, Wilson play action, delivers down to the near side, caught, high wind, picks up seven, and I think that's a good point about Jones. You know, he started his career and, and struggled a little bit, but certainly in the last two seasons has picked it up and, and been on pace for, for, you know, really quite the career. Yeah, and this season everything is is paying off for him. Like we're we're basically three and a half weeks in the season, and we're already talking about him as an MVP candidate. So everything is going uh, upside for him. Two in the backfield, and they give to Jones again. Jones wallop though there could not get out of the grasp of the defender, and that will set up uh, third and four. It's O'Brannon. Yeah, it's a big hit from the big man, Exodus O'Brannon there. Um, just basically letting Phoenix Jones know that, to, hey, I'm I'm still here. This defense is still here. We're going to try to stop you as much as we can. That's a good start. Three receivers, bottom of the screen, one to the top. Wilson fires across the middle. One-handed wow. grab. Nate Ritters, the rookie, showing out, has a touchdown. Yeah, we've seen a couple times during the SFLM uh, season uh, a few months prior that Nate Ritters is capable of such catches like that, and he managed to get, to get himself a little bit of space, jumps a little bit, gets that one-handed catch, keeps the ball in his chest while he goes down, and just an impressive catch overall by uh, Ritters, and now Mexico City up with over 30 points, and they just have everything going right for him uh, them today. Well, and Brett, you are a receiver, and uh, you have quite a few touchdowns under your belt. That, the first one of Nate Ritter's young career, and one-handed is a pretty good way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe my first uh, touchdown wasn't even that impressive. I think it was like a three-yard scamper to the end zone, <laughs> if anything. So uh, it, it, you could definitely one-up me when whenever we talk about things, saying, hey, your first touchdown was kind of boring. Mine was a one-handed catch. Take that. Certainly a, a good opportunity for anyone watching to, to join the league and somehow find their way into the end zone someday. Nate Ritters working his way through the minors, signed with Mexico City this season and uh, is here making an impact and making one-handed catches in the end zone. Certainly what the league is all about. For DC now, Brett, they set up, they have plenty of time and opportunity. The question is just if, if they can get something going. Yeah, and it, it's it's got to start somewhere with DC, whether it be uh, a run from Kevin Say, a long run from Kevin Say, or a long catch from one of the receivers. But big plays is what gets you back in this game. Three wide here, uh, synergy flips it out out of the backfield to the fullback. That's Chris Britton. Haven't called his name too much today, and he picks up seven. Yeah, and. Uh, a, a couple times we've seen Kevin say on that dumb pass. Instead, they went to the fullback and got a lot, got a lot of decent space there to get himself uh, seven yards and sets him up in a decent position for the second and short. Twins bottom of the screen. Britain along with Say in the backfield against a four-three. Give right up the middle. Say swallowed up and dropped in the backfield. Dexter Jackson was the first one there. Yeah, Dexter Jackson. It looks like Brock Lee got a little bit of assist there as well. Uh, coming in uh, up the middle and uh, just uh, Kevin say just not getting uh, what he wants with that running game right now. So uh, watch the trips on the top there. We might see a pass from over there. Bunch formation synergy goes the opposite way caught, but tackled short of the sticks. Beautiful play by KT Harrell to bring down the tight end West cloud short of the line to gain. 
And, and we talked about this before where Mexico City is fighting for those right. extra yards just to get that first down. Rupert Westcloud, it, it almost seemed like he was just ready to get tackled afterwards and all, and it kind of fell behind a little bit uh, behind the first down line. So not a great uh, drive from DC overall. Three and out for the Dragons and they'll have to send it back to this high powered Aztecs offense. Return here only out to the 36-yard line. Visit the SFL website at simulationfl.net where you can find links to apparel from Sector 6, the official apparel provider of the SFL, and the SFL mini helmets from 97 Sports Promotions. Sector 6 features replica team jerseys and completely customized jackets, flags, T-shirts, and more. Get the gear the fans wear with Sector 6, 97 Sports Promotions, and the SFL. Wilson fires across the middle, wide open receiver, bursting into the secondary. Beautiful play for Nate Ritters. He's there again. Yeah, Nate Ritters has just been a, a great option so far in this third quarter. He, he's getting himself open. He's beating defenders. Like, look at the wide open space that he had just right on the catch. It's just, it's been outstanding uh, from these receivers how open they've been getting just uh, an extra step from them. Sets them up first and 10 here at the 38. The linebacker came on the blitz, and Wilson able to dump it right over his head for first down yardage. Now two in the backfield. Give Jones. Jones, slow down, still manages to find four yards. Yeah, and it, Phoenix Jones, they, they'll take the four yards as well because it continues that time of possession for them. It keeps shutting the clock down, which they've been dominant in in this game. It's just absolute, absolutely uh, great work from Mexico City's offense. Give again, Jones right up the middle. Oh, that time he is hit hard. Nice shoulder charge there from Jack Russell to knock him down. Yeah, and uh, that's, that's exactly what DC needs to continue to do throughout this game. They need to find a way to just stop Phoenix Jones at this point, which has been, it's, it's a tough task, but they need to just neutralize him and then have Matt Wilson keep throwing in the air because sooner or later or eventually he could make, he could make a mistake of a throw. It happens in the SFL. If Ray Bent, or excuse me, Jones again on the dive is not going to get there. It'll be fourth and one, but inside a field goal range. Tackle made there by Riley Cues. This D Dragons team trying to slow down the Aztecs as much as possible here to give their offense as many shots as they can. Yeah, and, and uh, it's 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 a tough task because Mexico City does a great job of just spreading the ball around and making uh, DC tired as well as uh, second guess themselves if this is the, if this is the right defensive play that they want. Hold down for the Hall of Famer. Cole Varner sends this one up and through from 45. He is now uh, two for two on the day, and it's 36 to seven. Aztecs well in control of this one over the Dragons. Yeah, and it's just tacking on a few a few more points to kind of just uh, pad the lead a little bit more, make it a tougher task for DC to get back in this game. Uh, three points is three points. You'll take it wherever and whenever you can, and uh, they're, they're really relying on uh, their defense to, to keep them uh, from uh, narrowing down this lead. Well, and for the Aztecs, we kind of expect this, Brett. They've scored 31, 21, and 34 in their three wins over Lone Star, Carolina, and Las Vegas. But for D.C., a little bit of a surprise here. They uh, have scored 27, 34, and 52 in a loss in their 2-1. and one. So surprising to see them coming out, and the only seven points they can garner is on a return. Just goes to show you that while the offense is good for Mexico City, the defense is no slouch either. Oh, exactly, and, they, and they've stifled Shabazz Energy. Like, he's only 7 of 15 right now for 38 yards. Averaging 2.5 yards per completion. Now a give to Britton up the middle. He'll pick up a yard. Jackson there again. Yeah, and it's just... Ready to go is that uh, linebacking core for Mexico City. And uh, Britain trying to get as, as much positive yard as possible only gets one uh, for D.C. Uh, again, I would like to see them go deep, even though it, it hasn't worked out too well for them. Two in the backfield. Believe that's a tight end flex here against a 4-3 out of Mexico City. This one a flip near outside. That's caught turning up field. Has first down yardage down to the 38-yard line. That catch made by Josh Gill, his first of the day. 
Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a, a of an awkward curl that turned into a out route a scenario for Josh Gill there. Getting a little bit involved here now, and he found himself with enough space to cross that first down line, get a few more yards, and just try to get any momentum started for DC's offense. Two receivers split out, bottom of the screen, single back is offset to the left. They'll give it to Kevin Say. Say dives forward, picks up a yard, nothing more. Yeah, and it's, it's just been a great uh, defensive um look out of Mexico City. They've done their job. They've done their homework, essentially, on what's been successful for D.C. so far. They're limiting Kevin Say big time. He's he's had, he's had a struggle on the ground. Um, again, I'd, I'd love to see it go deep. Two receivers, bottom of the screen. Say in again. They are going to throw. Jones will, or excuse me, Synergy will dump it out to Kevin Say, and Say picks up six. And it's not too bad of a game there. Sets them up in a third to me, a third and medium, maybe a third and short scenario here. Um, but they need to convert this uh, third down here if they want to get back in this game. Third and four. Defense chance going around. Radio Azteca here. Synergy in the shotgun will look to throw. Fires across the middle. Caught! First down yardage. Nice completion there to the tight end. That's Rupert Westcloud. Westcloud did a good job to uh, keep the ball in his hands after he got hit. That was a, that was a pretty tough hit to take, uh, especially down the middle of the field there. So great job by Westcloud to keep that ball after the catch uh, to get that first down for D.C. Best drive of the day so far for the D.C. Dragons. Sets up first and 10 here at the 44 with just about a minute to play here in the third. Give Kevin Say, Say right up the middle, and let's send it to Cameron Irvine for a game break. Thanks, Andy. He was in bounds, wasn't he, Mike? Looking for the upset, trying to uh, get their first win of the season. Send Florida to two and two, back to Mexico City. Back here in Mexico City, another catch there for Jeff Banfield. We'll make it third and two here for DC. Trying to keep this drive moving and get into scoring range. They do have Pati Pati who can kick field goals but from 36 it would be a bit too far they need to move forward split backs here give Britain Britain has the first down and DC's drive stays alive yeah great job by DC's offensive line to uh, part the middle essentially to give an open space for Britain and not and enough space to get that two yards that they needed and a little bit more as the clock ticks away it looks like they're just going to end the third quarter here Three quarters in the books, 36-7 Mexico City on top of the D.C. Dragons. We will step aside and be right back. You're watching the Simulation Football League presented by APM Music.
Back here in Mexico City, Andy Hamilton along with Brett Solberg for Mexico City and D.C. 11 minutes on the clock, and Mexico City in control of this one. D.C. trying to get back into it. They will flip it out, and Kevin Say is going the wrong way. That's a little bit of a soft pass from Synergy, though. So um, basically when that ball was in the air, you had three Mexico City defenders basically looking at the ball. Oh, it's going to Kevin Say. Might as well run to Say, right? So... There's the loss of two there, and D.C. doesn't want that uh, entering the fourth quarter. Two receivers top of the screen. Say in the backfield, four down linemen, three linebackers for Mexico City. Man coverage on the outside. They will run, though, and Say is demolished. I mean, not going anywhere there. Yeah, the linebacking core, once again, for Mexico City, just knowing where Say is, knowing that he's getting the ball and just getting to him right away. It's been a, a fantastic showing from the Mexico City defense. Now five wide for Synergy on third and 11. Going to have to throw it here against this 3-2. Synergy dials Ooh. up the deep ball and it's picked off. Jeffrey Daggs intercepts it down at the 18. Yeah, and that's, and that's what you're going to see when you start to become a little bit desperate and you need to start throwing the ball deep. Um, they want to get Josh Gill involved as much as possible, uh, and they've tried it out throughout the whole game, but there's, it's either been overthrows, deflections, and this time a Jeffrey Daggs interception. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been a rough game for Shabazz Energy, and he, he needs to shake this off for however long he can. Learned last week at the pool that Jeffrey Daggs cannot catch a beach ball if you throw it at him in the wind, but he can catch a football. He picks it off there. Another interception for Daggs, and Wilson goes right back the other way and has a deep ball there out to the 34. Nate Ritter is just wide open going down with that uh, post route down the middle there. They, there was no receiver within two or three yards of him. Um, if he would, if he could have stayed up on that, uh, and he could probably ran for another five to ten yards. That was wide open play from uh, Mexico City, and Nate Ritter's doing a great job in the second half. Split gun look here for Matt Wilson, who will take the snap and fire it quickly on the outside. That is complete. Turning up field, picking up seven is Nate Ritter, who surpasses a hundred yards. Yeah, there's the there's the post century mark for Nate Raiders there, and I believe that is his first of his career. So that's uh, that's something to uh, you know tip your hat to to having a performance like that. Um, but the the main story here is that Raiders has been wide open on a lot of occasions today. He could easily have 150 yards if uh, the ball was thrown his way a little bit more too. And that's the benefit of having four receivers and a tight end. Lots of options for Matt Wilson. Fires again there. Fox Highwind uh, catches that one. Excuse me, the completion there for Wilson. Another good one. 35 of 41 today. 84, or excuse me, 85% around their completion percentage, Brett. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, it's even, it's even better than last week where Mexico City uh, took it to Las Vegas. So this has been an amazing performance by Matt Wilson. Wilson to throw again. Another completion there across the middle. Just continues to find receivers. Jason Bartley with another grab. Yeah, Bartley with a, a, a nice uh, Nate Raiders-esque one-handed catch there, I guess we can say now. But uh, it's, it's, it feels like the Mexico City receivers, just uh, in, especially in the second half, have two steps ahead on the D.C. secondary. It's been crazy. Another give right up the middle. That is carried and Jones just drags defenders for first down yardage Benny Butcher gets dragged there yeah putting all power backs to shame with that kind of run there he had four defenders basically draped over him the entire way and still got the four yards for the first down it's been it's been one of those days for Phoenix Jones yeah, and that, that's Benny Butcher, who's a defensive tackle. Not an easy guy to carry down the field. Jones, with room there, rips off another six. Yeah, and you see on the bottom ticking there, he's over 115 yards of, of rushing alone there. We can't forget the 43 yards that he's had uh, on the air as well. So he's, he's close to 160 yards all-purpose today, and that's just another uh, excellent performance to continue his MVP bid. 
Yeah, another shout out to Mark Mello in the stats truck. Right on the money with Jones rushing yards, and they're going to have to add to it here. Phoenix Jones down to the 22, just continuing to punish this DC defense. Yeah, and DC, DC has to be at, like absolutely demoralized seeing that Phoenix Jones is getting whatever he wants in this fourth quarter here. He's jumping over he's jumping over toes, he's jumping over feet, he's juking defenders the other way, and he's getting big gains here now. So uh, an excellent showing from Phoenix Jones in the offensive line for Mexico City today. Split backs, and they will give another give to Jones, and it just goes to show you, Brett, that, you know, with a back like Phoenix Jones, a quarterback like Matt Wilson, when you have that type of longevity here with Mexico City, you really can create a franchise that continues to push for championships year in and year out. Yeah, and when, and when you're when you're together for so long, the chemistry can just be outmatched compared to other teams that you keep, they keep trying to adjust, but it's always tough when there's great chemistry coming from other teams. Another seven yards for Jones as they look to salt this clock away. And that is why, you know, Ramos Lynn is a, a Hall of Famer and why he, you know, deserves all the accolades is, you know, him preparing himself and, and, and putting this team and this franchise in the positions that they are in. A season nine champion and one of the front runners this season to to put themselves in that conversation as Jones gets all the way down to the 10. You can visit the SFL's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash simulationfl for an archive of every game, draft, and every moment you might have missed since the SFL got its start in 2013. Our YouTube features top 10 plays of the week, archived people behind the player segments, and all the major milestones in league history, such as that Season 9 championship for Mexico City. Brett, I know you and I have some bad memories in this building, but for Mexico City, they were good memories as they beat Chicago in the Season 9 championship, and they are looking to get back to that big game. Wilson fires across the middle. Dags down to the two. It was Jeffrey Dags who started this drive off of the pick. He, he almost went to the other Dags to finish it off. Yeah, and it's just, uh, again, the receivers are getting themselves open with uh, with great speedy receivers getting to the end zone, and then Mike Deggs comes in just the right place uh, to get the pass, and they're, <laughs> they're at the two. Two in the backfield here. Jones is the deep back. They'll give it to him. Ray Bentley kind of adjusted that play with the way that he hesitated to hit the hole there. Uh, you know, you don't normally knock a Hall of Famer, but that was not... Ray Bentley's uh, most shine, most uh, shining moment as a fullback. Yeah, and I think I, th I think he can get a, get a pass on this one here, considering that their team is up twenty nine at this point. I'm sure Ray or uh, Ramos Lynn will not give him uh, a pass uh, in the locker room later. This tip ball is incomplete. <laughs> falls to the turf somehow. There were eighteen players around it. Not one of them could haul it in. Yeah, I would almost argue there was 180 players in that end zone just waiting to grab that ball. It was, uh, but I was more so focused on Matt Wilson once again avoiding the pressure. It's it, it's been a masterclass to see uh, Matt Wilson in the in the pocket and moving around the pocket throughout his career, and it's, and this has just been one great example of it in this game alone. Fourth and two for Mexico City. They will send on the kicker Cole Varner who will look to add another three points to the lead here to make it 39-7. to seven. Snap back, hold down, kick up and on the way, and it is good from 19. Mexico City extends the lead. Coverage of the Simulation Football League's 17th season right here on Next Level Sports continues next Saturday. Same time, same place as the Florida Storm. Welcome these Mexico City Aztecs in the 12th meeting between old school foes at 2.30 Eastern time. That drama will be followed by a Pacific clash between the Vancouver Legion and the top challenger, Los Angeles. Bonus coverage will include a rematch between Atlanta and London and D.C., these Dragons visiting Louisiana. It all comes your way next Saturday right here on Next Level Sports. And we had to pause our read there as Kanye Rockefeller almost looked like he might be taking another one. Yeah, Kanye Rockefeller has been threatening a couple times to get a second uh, kick return touchdown here. 
it's just he he if we talk about a lot uh, about agile players i think Kanye Rockefeller is one of the best agile kick returners in this game Four receivers wide. Rock, or excuse me, Synergy going to have to throw from here on out. That one tipped up, bobbled around, and incomplete. Mexico City could not get their hands on it, and neither could D.C. Yeah, and that was, again, another tip drill. Um, beforehand, we saw Matt Wilson throw a tip drill in the end zone. This time, it was a tip drill going close to midfield for D.C., and uh, this time, no Mexico City uh, defender can uh, get a hold of the ball there. Four minutes, 20 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter as D.C. tries to get some pride and get an offensive score in this game. Synergy stands, floats across the middle, one-handed catch there, and now they're going to go hurry up. Yeah, they're going to need to go hurry up here to get some points because Mexico City has shed so much clock. Josh Gill with that grab. They'll throw it to Gill again. Ooh. Incomplete, overthrew him. Dan Tritz supplied some pressure, and... Let's send it over to Cameron Irvine with a game break from Fort Worth and Florida. Cam? Thank you, Andy. Mike, Florida struggling today, but they're still alive. Yeah, Cam, Florida's trying to weather the storm, so to speak. Americans all come with a late touchdown catch, and Florida's trying to uh, come back in this ball game. Fort Worth up late. This despite 18 yards for Bullet Boletsky on the ground today. Two minutes to go there. Fort Worth has the ball. Florida's trying to get a stop. Intense action there, intense action here. That play broken up, incomplete there. Coming on the blitz was uh, one of the Mexico City defenders. The backups are in for the Aztecs as they are out in front of this one. And D.C. will have a chance here to put some, uh, some points and some stats on the board. Mm -hmm. Four wide here for Synergy. Say offset to the right. He will throw it. Sidearm pass is complete. Josh Gill all the way up to the 41. Yeah, they're, they're starting to get Gill involved here, and even though the backups are in, you still want to fight for as many points as you can. Another toss. That is Gill again out to the 28-yard line. And yeah, they keep pushing forward here. This is good stuff from D.C. Dragons trying to showcase that today might just not have gone their way. They still have all the weapons. Say spins back inside, fights forward, picks up eight. That's a good that's a good fight from Kevin Say here. You fight until the last second of the game. That's good stuff. Throwing again. That one Ooh. deflected away. Was trying to hit Mike Churchill there and incomplete. It's been a day that DC will like to f like likely like to forget. Brett, they um, they certainly have not been firing on all cylinders. Only 122 yards for Shabazz Synergy, 36 on the ground for Kevin Say, albeit only on four attempts. Here is Synergy fires again. That one is complete to West Cloud, and they're gonna get back to the line of scrimmage. It was a nice catch by West Cloud, and he got a few inches forward there. Second round pick, 15th overall. Synergy floats, moves, throws, and it hits the back of a Mexico City defender. Was trying to get West Cloud into the end zone. Yeah, and they, they want to get those points uh, as quickly as possible here. That's why they went with the hurry up. But uh, Locke looked to be the guy that hit it right on, right on his uh, nameplate on the back of his jersey there. Um, Mexico City still still fighting on the defensive end despite being up 32. Uh, Bunch formation, bottom of the screen, one to the top. Single back is Say. 3-2 look here out of Mexico City. Five-step drop, Synergy fires outside. It'll be third and goal. They cut into that difference. Mike Churchill makes just his second grab of the day. It's a nice job to slow himself down, knowing that he's in the sidelines, knowing that the throw was coming and then just kind of tippy-toeing himself down the sideline to catch that ball. Uh, DC now at the four, really looking to get uh, six here. Four yards separate them, probably four down territory, although never discount just taking some points. Here is Synergy under center, will look to throw. Sands the pocket, delivers, floats one, caught, touchdown DC. Jeff Banfield into the end zone, his second grab of the day, worth six points. 
Yeah, and they'll and they'll be happy with that one there. They had a really nice drive. They had a really good hurry up uh, call going on. It's it's almost like they did their two minute drill with four minutes left to go there, getting uh, a very nice progression through. And DC can come out of this with a little bit of a positive here, saying that you know what, we can still score points here, uh, especially in this fourth quarter if everything runs well, which was what happened on this drive. They will send on Pati Pati to add the extra point. And it is up and good now, 14 to 39. And Pati can't take too much time off. I would imagine that they will try an onside kick here. Yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to do there. But, uh, you know, game quite far out of reach at this point. You might as well try whatever you can to get the ball back, right? That, that would be the goal is to try and... Just continue to give your offense reps and opportunities. Kick up from Pati. It is bobbled oh! around and still on the ground. And Mexico <laughs> City collects it. After all that, the Aztecs fall on it. Yeah, and the, the thing is, once I saw that ball go out of the hands of that Mexico City player, I was like, there's a shot here. We usually don't see that quite often, especially that front line for the uh, onside kick recovery team for a lot of teams they usually catch it right away but this time it was like a slight bobble and then it was in the ground i was like oh my lord dc could have this but mexico city gets to it outside of the two minute warning they will have to run the football this one another beautiful running play there right up the middle that is lay gallant he actually brett just recovered the onside kick and they said you know what let's reward this man with some reps and some opportunity you know what? Why not, right? Because uh, you, you do something that uh, potentially could have been uh, a big thing for DC, and you kind of right. stop them in their tracks to score any more points. I know Ramos Lynn was definitely excited to see uh, someone else other than that front line to grab that. Uh, <laughs> so why not reward him for a run? And they do so by having him in there. Now Phoenix Jones, I think, has checked back into the game here. They will go. That's Gallant at the fullback position <laughs> They're going to play him everywhere. He's trying to play his way onto one of these SFL franchises. And you know what? That's not a bad idea. That'll be the two-minute warning. 39-14, Mexico City going to move to 4-0 and oh, as long as they can take all the time off the clock. Take a short break. Be right back. Back here in Mexico City, the Aztecs out in front, in front of their hometown crowd, Andy Hamilton, along with Brett Solberg here. And 
the Aztecs just going to try and run this clock out. DC will take their first time out, and we'll send it to Cameron Irvine with a game break. Cam? Thank you, Andy. Mike, a rough two-minute offense for Florida ends the game like this. Yeah, Cam, uh, you know, how much did that E.J. Minson injury early in the first half uh, cost uh, Florida in this state right here? Uh, you know, uh, pass out to the flash to Bullet Bolesky, and that's pretty much how this two-minute two, two offense went for Florida. They could not get anything going, and uh, Fort Worth holds on for the victory. They pull the upset and get their first win of the year. Florida falls to 2-2, two and two, now in a tie for the lead in the Atlantic. Back to Mexico City, Andy Hamilton, Brett Solberg. Back here in Mexico City, they went for it, got the first down. Brett, they are really taking the, the air out of the tires here for this one. Aztecs have done that all day. They've been in control of this game. Yeah, it's, and we'll probably see it at the post game and the, just the difference of time possession alone. Two in the backfield, another give there to another halfback, and that one will go for one. And, and really, Brett, you know, I, I think D.C., it just wasn't their day. They've shown that they are a good football team, just just might have got caught a little bit off guard. And then, you know, once you're too far behind, you're struggling to get back in. And I, th and I think that's exactly what happened there because um, if we go back to that interception in the end zone that was ended up ca uh, being called a safety, a very questionable call by the referee corps. I believe there would be some fines and disciplines from the refereeing corps uh, this coming week. But uh, yeah, that probably blew the winds right out of their sails, unfortunately. And then Mexico City just cruised all throughout the second half. Aztecs certainly dominating. We don't want to take anything away from their great day. Their offense went to work. Defense had a really good game as well, only allowing one touchdown uh, from the Dragons' offensive unit. But um, all things considered, D.C. had a lot that they probably would have wished would have gone differently today. They, that's the best part of the league, Brett, is uh, every week is a new opportunity to go back to the drawing board and you know really – take your next opponent in stride and go back to work there there's not a lot of time to to mope and, and cry about you know a loss or something you you're, you're right back to work right away yeah that's, a, that's absolutely correct you just go back to, right to the drawing drawing board and then you just it's it's so it's so quick and easy to forget about certain weeks especially in this sfl because what you can do is just focus on the next opponent right away and learn their learn their um uh, their weaknesses and stuff like that. I, I believe Stephen Mullinax and Chris Britton and crew, they'll, they'll be fine. Cole Varner is on here. It's fourth and five, so they will try and kick a field goal. Can't really punt from the 29. I don't know who would do that. Kick up from Varner is up, and it is good from 45 yards out. Mexico City adds three more, now up to 42 points on this D.C. defense. Yeah, I think Mexico City just wanted to cover that uh, that point spread there, and now bringing it up to uh, 56. We're almost there. Uh, credit to Jack's data for uh, doing all these spreads and and uh, the point advantages and stuff like that. Uh, I don't even have the the brain capacity to even try that stuff. Certainly, uh, one of our groups in the SFL that puts out good quality content. We have a lot of those different groups and, and shows and teams so always enjoy listening to their work as Rockefeller brings it back out to the 25 and again just another shout out to Mark Mello who's running our stats truck today has done a really good job and when you look at the quarterback comparison Matt Wilson 40 of 47 for nearly 400 yards and Shabazz Synergy 18 of 32 for just a buck 42 certainly uh, some room to improve for Synergy as he hasn't had a day he'd like to remember one touchdown and one pick Wilson has three touchdowns three picks but the yardage and the completion percentage, the main difference. Although this one, another throw across the middle is caught there. Mike Churchill down to the 39. Going to have to get quick here. They're going to spike it. We'll spike with eight seconds to go and try and get us over that uh, over under of 57 and a half. If you're still watching in the chat on uh, FTF neck or uh, excuse me, FTF Twitch, why don't you let us know if you think that DC will get us over the over under here before the end or, or will stay under. Uh, I, somehow I'm going to take the under here. I don't think with eight seconds DC can get down there and kick a field goal, although you never know. We'll see if anyone in the chat 
thinks that I am wrong. Synergy will float out to the left side, give Say. Say will spin, and with no timeouts, that'll be the last play of the game. The D.C. Dragons fall 14-42 to to the Mexico City Aztecs. Brett, take us through how you saw it today. It was an offensive masterclass from the Mexico City Aztecs. Just see the time of possession all on its own. Once again, another game for Mexico City that was over half an hour of time with the ball. That is exactly what Mexico City wants. They want to have the ball as much as possible. They want to have these slow and methodical drives. They want to tire the defense, and that's exactly what they got. And it basically carried over throughout all four quarters. Um, and you saw a lot of it uh, from Phoenix Jones. You saw it uh, from in the air from Matt Wilson. And Wilson did a great job uh, spreading the ball around. We got a, a century mark from Nate Ritter. 69 yards from Jason Bartley, which is very Hi. nice. 84 yards from uh, Mike Daggs. Another 42 from Fox, Fox Highland. Maybe throw a few more to Jacob McCall next week, but I think Ramos Lynn knows that uh, he'll get a, a McCall a little bit more involved with that. But just an offensive masterclass from Mexico City. As for DC, it's just a little bit of a hiccup. They're still two and two. They're still in a they're still in a good position in their division. So they just need to go back to the drawing board, focus on the next game. And I, I, I think they know what happened and what they did wrong in this game, so that they'll fix it for next week. And who, Brett, who would you give the player of the game to? I, I think it's between Jones or, or Matt Wilson. If Matt Wilson didn't have the three interceptions, he would have had it easily. But uh, I'm going to go with Phoenix Jones once again. Well, your player of the game for today's Week 4 contest Ooh. is Matt Wilson, despite the three interceptions, 390 oh. yards, three scores. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching. This has been the presentation of the Simulation Football League. Mexico City gets the win and stays undefeated. And after this short break, we'll send it to SFL Studios for analysis. Stay tuned. Welcome to Sim Football Post Game, along with Mike St. Green. I'm Cameron Irvine. 42-14, the Mexico City Aztecs roll over the D.C. Dragons. That a bit of a surprise, uh, Mike, to us as uh, the Aztecs. I don't know if you put Baltimore one in the power rankings, but I think Mexico City through four weeks, they're the most complete team out there right now. 
Well, you know, Cam, last season I would jinx a lot of teams and give them the number, number one ranking. <laughs> That's true. We both did, yes. <laughs> and, yeah, they would turn around and lose the very next week. So I'm, I'm not going to put that on either one of these teams. <laughs> very good. Uh, so they won't be mad at me next week if something, you know, were to turn out differently. But, uh, but yeah, man, uh, you know, all, all kidding aside, this Mexico City team, um, they look about as efficient and, and completely balanced uh, more, more importantly than any team out there, uh, you know, as we've noticed yesterday with, uh, you know, with Baltimore, Wigmore had a huge game, five touchdown passes, I, I think over over 400 yards passing, and uh, but you know, not a big running game to speak of. But today you had Matt Wilson close to 400 yards, 390 uh, yards passing, three touchdowns. But you also add in a solid running game of Phoenix Jones, 145 and a touchdown. So, uh, you know, the, the defense played outstanding. Jeffrey Daggs had a big interception there in the second half. Uh, it, this team is looking about as complete and efficient and well-rounded as any team out there. Now, Fort Worth takes down Florida 20-14. to London was able to overcome an injury to a wide receiver, Saren Storm, earlier today. Uh, Florida was not able to overcome uh, a loss of E.J. Minson and Fort Worth uh, no longer 0-3. We've seen some 0-3 teams step up big. Louisiana, Vegas, Fort Worth all this week um, to, uh, mm -hmm. to get out of that. And I, I believe, Mike, that leaves just two uh, winless teams left. Jacksonville and, I'm try and San Diego. And That's San it. Diego, yeah. That's yeah. it. Right now, I mean that—that's just wild. As uh, as Fort Worth finally proves they're better than their record. Yeah, Fort Worth played, uh, you know, the type of game that they like to play. Grinded out, uh, you know, with Williams on the ground. He had 133 yards today. He didn't see the end zone, but but what they did improve on, at least from what I saw from last week, uh, they got Cam Curtis going a little bit. He had an early first, first quarter touchdown to see Stephen Hacker, and he followed that up with another late touchdown to uh, Cade Stevens. Uh, and you know, his passing game was. Uh, you know, not big, no big yardage from it, 155 yards and a couple of touchdowns, but it was efficient, effective, and uh, and the defense did a good enough job uh, on Florida, man. And as you mentioned to me, uh, uh, man, Bullet Bolesky, he had like 60-something touches, but only 50-something yards, and that's, that's rushing and receiving. Uh, they, they pretty much shut down this Florida offense today. Now, for our For the Fans audience, if you want to see more simulation football, we're not done yet. Head over to the FTF Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash FTFnext, and you'll see the unbeaten Queen City Corsairs trying to keep pace with Mexico City and Baltimore right now. They'll take on the 2-1 and one Atlanta Swarm. Other action uh, around the league includes Sioux Falls and Portland at 520 uh, Eastern on the SFL's Twitch channel. But a, a, a rare treat off TV, Atlanta at Queen City with a major matchup, Mike. Yeah, Cam, I've been waiting on this matchup all week long. Two of the top teams in the league. Atlanta, they're coming back to their championship form. Two and one this season. One, you know, last second loss. Queen City, uh, you know, the winning's team in the SFL history. Uh, three and oh, great start to the season. Uh, I can't wait to see this matchup this afternoon and see who comes out on top and uh, can lay claim to some, you know, pride in the eastern part of our country. Should be good. We will... Uh... See you guys next week on For the Fans when we come back. Same time, same place. 12.30 Eastern gets us started next week. For Mike St. Green, I'm Cameron Irvine. Good night.